This meeting is being recorded. Oh, good. Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the final chapter in this particular exploration of 16th century dance. Last week, we started Villanella, which is our foray into 16th century Italian dance. As we recall, it is a cascarda, which is a dance that is actually only mentioned by one dance master in this era, Mr. Fabrizio Caroso. And it's sort of light and sprightly as dances go, and one of its characters, uh, main traits rather, is that it is danced in a nice 6-8 tempo. So the music has this kind of country feel to it, well, country by the 16th century standards at any rate. Um, so I apologize, our musicians are arguing with us this morning, and so my beloved husband is now sort of semi on camera because he's trying to fight with them. But we'll continue with our, uh, we'll do our warm up and all of that, we don't need the music for that. But because this is an exploration, not just of the dance, but the culture of the dance, I thought I'd start us with a little reading this morning about gentlemen's manners. Because of course, Caroso goes into extreme detail about manners on and off the dance floor, how you should invite people to dance, what sort of clothes you should wear. He even talks about grooming, like how you should groom yourself for a ball. Of course, there are different rules for ladies than for men. So he says uh, regarding gentlemen and how they should conduct themselves when attending parties. He says, <clears throat> let me say that there are some gentlemen who go to parties wearing gloves so tight footing that upon being invited to dance by the ladies and preparing to take hands, they must take more than an Ave Maria to remove them. And if they do not succeed with their hands, then they even use their teeth. When they do this, some accidentally drop their capes or riding cloaks. This also plays little honor to the lady who has invited them by making her wait so long. It is better then to wear gloves that are fairly loose rather than too tight. For on occasion, I have seen a gentleman on trying to remove them with his teeth who has had one finger of the glove left in his mouth while all in attendance at the party laughed at this behavior. <laughs> um, I've never, this is the first dance manual that talks about how tightly your gloves should fit. But there's some interesting tidbits in here. One, that you should not dance wearing gloves. And I actually, this crops up in Arena, in our bus dance uh, from earlier in the century. He actually mentions that it is embarrassing to wear gloves while dancing. So the implication is that you shouldn't wear gloves when dancing. You should actually be dancing skin to skin, hand to hand. But also, he talks about <laughs> the tight fittingness of the gloves, and specifically that he has witnessed people using their teeth to remove their gloves. I don't know about you, but I have definitely used my teeth to remove gloves in the past, although I will say never at a ball just before joining someone on the dance floor. So take note, loose fitting gloves, do not use your teeth. Another interesting tidbit is how they use Ave Maria as a a method of measuring time. This is actually also a technique for measuring time in cookbooks of this era. They will actually say, do this thing for so-and-so number of Ave Marias. So that's kind of funny that you use that time gauging for cooking and uh, to judge whether you're being too slow in removing your gloves. Um, also to note, they it says that they accidentally drop their capes. So rather than taking them off on purpose, but he actually has a section on what to do with the cape. And we'll t come back to that a little bit later because he starts talking about how to dance with various articles of clothing from this era. Yes, my love? Oh, really? Okay. <clears throat> uh, it looks like the musicians might be totally refusing to participate today. We'll come up with some other solution for the music. But for now, let us go ahead and warm up. Let us go ahead and warm up and, and kind of recall where we left off in Villanella. So brief recap, this is a dance for couples. Okay? And we're dancing side by side, leaders on the left, followers on the right, or in the, in the parlance of this era, gentlemen on the left, ladies on the right. And our hands are just sort of naturally low between us. They're, they're not, there's, 
there's none of this, right? None of this sort of dancing that you like to see in certain Hollywood productions or in certain plays or even in certain social or a performance dance groups, none of this. This is bad for the tendons across the back of your wrist. We were dancing side by side. And musically, this dance has, or the music rather for this dance, has verses, has a verse and a chorus structure. And the dance also therefore has that verse and chorus structure. And we had actually made it through three of the five verses for this dance. And so let's go ahead and uh, review our footwork. So we have our posse, our steps, right? So our weight is in our right foot and our left foot. Um, we're actually going to step one pasa, one step per bar of that 6-8 music. I'm sorry, that's Amoroso. Um, or not um, Graca Amorosa. Um, still the right tempo. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free, and let's just walk sempi at that tempo. So ready, ah. And we're on the balls of our feet, or the front halves of our feet. And now, like we're stepping over a pile of unpleasantness, so this nice little wickety sort of shape. Okay. So those are our posse, our posse sempi, posse grave. Then we also have um, seguiti, as they're called in this era, our doubles. So weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free, and that looked like this. Step, 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 pause. There was a pause between each one. And they're sort of light and sprightly in this, over this cascado music. Even though we dance one of those seguiti over top of two bars of music, ordinario, they're called, seguiti ordinario. Seguiti ordinari, ordinary sequences or doubles, as was in the past. So that looked like this. Step, step, step. And for my more advanced dancers, we add that nice raising and lowering. Up, up, left. So you create this nice gentle wave sequence. So let's go ahead and just walk our posse ordinary. <laughs> uh, I think it's one or two. Yeah. Um, if you open it up in the thing, it might actually show it. So <clears throat> weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. Uh, two bars for nothing. Da, 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 da. Step, step, step. And yeah, that's it. Step, 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 step. 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 If there are there questions about our doubles, about our seguiti ordinari, as they're called in the original language? Is there, is there something in the chat, my list? Okay, so let's put that together then, building up towards that sequence that uh, repeated so much last week and is going to repeat again this week. Two sempi, or two posse, and this do dopio, two posse and the dopio. There's a seguito called in the, the source. So, first one will be, thank you, my love, what did you have to do to get the musicians to play? Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, well. So weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. So the sequence is going to be paso, paso, seguito, paso, paso, seguito, step, single, single, double, single, single, double. First one sequence, rather, the first set will start with the left. The second set will start with the right. And we'll just alternate that. And let's go ahead, since we have music, let's go ahead and walk that to the actual music. I am still sharing computer sound. And as always, if you can't hear the music, now that I'm actually playing the music, 
or you can't hear me, do let me know. <laughs> Just checking that my microphone is still on. Okay, brief intro. Um, or wait, no, there is no intro to this music, right. So, go ahead, weight is on your right foot, left foot is free, preparing to start with your two stumpy. Single, double, two, three, and single, 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 single, double, two, three. Keep going. Adding that nice raising and lowering for my more advanced dancers. Questions about the singles and the doubles. So remember, as the music is faster, or if the music is faster, especially for more beginner level dancers, then you want to just keep your steps smaller. They don't have to be large. And in fact, Caruso described steps in finger lengths. Um, I think it was a problem in his era that people were taking overly large exaggerated steps. And to counter that, he decided to describe steps as being ridiculously small. I don't really think that people's steps were actually three finger widths, because that's what he says they should be. But point is, smaller steps are actually the more desired step in this particular genre. OK, so we have our, our posse, our singles, and our seguidi ordinari, our doubles. And then we had some different kinds of sideways motion in this repertory of dance. So we had our continenze. And remember, that actually takes two bars of music each in this genre. So going to the left, that looks like this. One, two, three, four. And so it was a, a slinky, small sideways step with a raising and lowering at the end. And then you can do that to the right. Slink up, down. And in time to the music, we did one left and to the right. That looked like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's a slight bending, the side that looks like this, there's a slight bending of the knees and a slight lowering of your body to slink into the continenza. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And we gather our foot on either end of the continenza. So if you step with the left, you gather with the right. And if you step right, you gather with the left. Questions about the continenza, the continenze in their plural. <clears throat> okay, then we also had a riprese, another genre of sideways step. And in this dance, they end up being really these cute little sprightly wicket steps, right? So that looks like this. If I'm going to the left, it would look like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So actually, Start, oh, I forgot to make it down, I forgot to bring. Yeah, sorry. I just realized that I turned my wax tablet on to receive notifications from students, and now I needed to turn it off. So we actually start by raising ourselves as we move to the side and then lower at the end. So it's as though you're stepping sideways over something unpleasant. Right? And you make these cute little wickety shapes, like in, it's OK. Right? So. We can do it to the left, but we can also do it to the right. So let's try it to the right. Weight is on our left foot, our right foot is free. And up, lower, up, lower, up, lower, up, lower, up, lower. And in this dance, one little ripresa takes one bar of music. So one little six, eight bar, da, da, da. So we only did them in this dance. We're only going to do them to the right. And they come in pairs. So we do two back to back. So weight is on our left foot, our right foot is free. Ready, and 
Chara chara cha cha chara. Let's try that again. Weight is on your left foot, right foot is free. And chara chara ra ra chara. Okay, so let's combine that then with the continenza because that was part of our chorus. Starting to remember, we had a chorus, and that chorus consisted of continenza left, to reprise right, and then the riverenza, which we'll review here in a moment. But for now, we have our continenza to the left, and then to reprise to the right. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and continenza, reprise, reprise. At the end of which your left foot should be free. So let's try that again. Weight is already on your right foot, your left foot is free. So continenza left, to reprise right. And continenza, reprise, reprise. Questions about continenza or reprise or their combination? Okay. Moving onward with our review, we also have our reverenza in this era, our reverence, our obeisance, the honor. And um, it is still a lowering of your body. It is not, it is not a bending over, right? This is, this is the French way of doing it in this era. The Italian way is still lowering yourself into a sort of lunge, but it's an elliptical sort of motion. And it's very slow. It takes four bars of music, and it actually starts by moving your left foot forward. All right, so that's count one. Then count two is bringing your left foot back. Count three is lowering yourself, but in this elliptical fashion, and count four is coming back up. All right, so all together that looks like this. One, two, three, four. And as you come back up, your foot comes with you and gathers once more to the right ankle, but does not close. We do not close. We keep it gathered, but wait firmly on that right foot so that the left foot is easily accessible for more dancing high gain. Now let's try that reverenza together. Weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. Ready, and forward, back, lowering, coming up. Okay, let's put that together now with our chorus. So we're gonna do continenza left, Represa, represa, reverenza, right. And at this point, we should start maybe be thinking about as if we had a partner dancing in that way. So decide if you're the follower or the leader and position your hand accordingly. If you're the follower, your hand will be on top of the leader. If you're the leader, then your hand will be sort of like this so that the follower's hand can make rest on top. My love, could you come and dem help demonstrate this? So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. The total sequence is going to be continenza left, represa, represa, reverenza left. So ready, and no, 16th century continenza. Oh. Down and up. Okay. Yeah, so ready, and continenza, represa, represa. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you should have been doing the drills with me. should have. Okay. okay, ready, and. Continenza, represa, represa, reverenza. Okay, let's try that again. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and. Continenza, represa, represa, rever. And remember, you're not doing the reverenza straight forward. We do the social V, so you're facing each other. Okay, so that's the review of the chorus. And that's all the footwork we covered last week. There's a new step, just one new step we need to learn for this week. Before we do so, are there any questions about things we've covered thus far? Okay, so there being, uh, let me just bring up the chat window just so I can actually see if anyone else is like. Okay, so the new step we need to learn, the new step we need to learn is called a seguito spezzato. Take a moment to let that roll on your tongue. Seguito spezzato, and it literally means a skittered sequence. Uh, seguito is the term that uh, Caruso uses for pretty much any kind of double step, um, and it literally just means sequence. And I think, I suspect that it maybe might have been a conceit about how to make dance seem even more technical and demanding and ma of you know mathematical 
to bring it even further into the realm of a fine art instead of just something peasants do to pass the time, you know, because peasants don't spend their time in fields working. They obviously just dance all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the things that the aristocracy thought about the peasantry. So the spicclato looks like this. I'll demonstrate it first. It still leads with your left foot like everything and then alternates left and right. So we go one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Now you'll notice it doesn't travel far. It travels the same distance as one single step. And it's only the first step that actually travels anywhere. And the idea is that it's also creating this kind of elliptical motion with the body sort of upward the way that the reverenza created the downward ellipse. Right. So that's the spazzato in its actual natural habitat. Let's break that down. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. So we step with the left foot, we step onto the right foot next to it, and then step back onto the left foot without really traveling very far. So it's three steps, but the third step doesn't really go anywhere. It's more of an ornamented single step. It might actually, in fact, help you to think of it as an ornamented single rather than a double in terms of how little distance it's supposed to cover. So that would look like this. Left, right, left. So my left foot travels just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit forward on the second left step, but not really very far at all. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and try one spazzato leading with the left foot. Ready, and one, two, three. You notice you're spending a lot of the energy on the up and the down, right? That's really where you want to focus on the spazzato is on the up and the down, and rather than, rather than moving your momentum forward. This is not a piva. It is not any kind of piva, not at all. I want to emphasize that for my people who know 15th century dance, like Petite Rienne or Petite Rose type dances. This is not a piva. This is an ornamented single, really. So let's try that again. Weight is on our right foot. Our left foot is free. Ready, and da, da, da. At the end of which, your weight should still be solidly on your left foot. Your right foot should be gathered, but weightless, and ready to do a spazzato. So let's try that with the right foot. Ready, and right, left, right. So let's go ahead and just do a series of them around the room. Um, and for those who are, this is feeling a little awkward, your steps can be slightly larger. But as you start getting more comfortable with it, I want us to start contracting it down from something like this to something like this. One, two, three, three, two, three. Okay. So weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. Ready, and one, da, 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 da. Da 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 Okay. Questions about the spazzati. Seguiti spazzati. I will refer to them as spazzati. I will hardly ever call them seguiti spazzati, even though that's their proper full term. Okay. So that is the only new step you need to learn for today. So congratulations. <laughs> um, the figure it comes up with is actually at the very end of the dance. So let's go ahead and review the dance as we have it thus far. So we had done three of the five verses. The first verse was our kind of special verse chorus combo because the dance opens with that riverenza. So for that first, for the first chorus, on that chorus, we do not end with the riverenza. We cut the riverenza off because that whole verse started with the riverenza. And it's just excessive to have a reverenza at the beginning and the end of this first section of the dance. Right. So we started with our reverence with our partner, my love. So we're side by side with our partner. 
And we're going to do that river ends in the social V. So we go one, two, three, four. And then again, I mentioned the typical opening for many of these dances is continenza left and right. So continenza, continenza. And then after that typical um, opening for these dances, we will do two doubles, two of those seguiti ordinari, starting with our left foot together. So we go step, 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 and step, step, step. So that's the verse. And now we have the truncated chorus. So we do continental left, one, two, three, four, and reprise, right, and right. But no reverenza because the phrase of music is done. Now we need to get to the next verse. So let's go ahead and walk that whole thing through, that whole first section, first verse and first special chorus. So we does in our right foot, our left foot is free, ready and raver, renza, continenza, continenza, double two, three, and double two, three, continenza, continenza, reprise, da, 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 da. Okay, questions about that first section? Okay, onward to the second verse. And then from here on out, the chorus is regular and the same every time. So second, third, and in fact, fourth verses all have the same footwork, just different geography. So the footwork is two singles and a double, two singles and a double. So the geography on these, on verses two and three, we called this crescent switching, if you recall. So let's move. Move leftwards so that you have room for this. So what's going to happen is whoever's on the left is in that moment the leader. They are going to go two singles and a double, two singles and a double to end to the right of their partner. So that was the crescent figure. So the last step of the last double is a half turn with a mezza volta. So let's try that together. Okay, weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. If you're the leader, ready and single, single, double, two, three, and single, single, double, two, three, and. And then we do the chorus. Continenza, ripresa, ripresa, riferenza. You need to do the forward. Forward, back, lower, up. Okay, so we then repeat that. Verse three, new leader, I'm now the leader. I will now do the crescent to go to the right. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and single, single, double, two, three, and single, single, double, two, three, and chorus, and repraisa, repraisa, river. Renza. And remember to make that down elliptical. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do the whole dance through to that point with music. Are there questions before we do so? Okay, there being no questions, the music shall commence. So there is no introduction because basically that Riverenza and the Continenza are your introduction. So the second you hear the music, start with pointing your toe, your left toe, moving your left toe forward for your riverenza. Continenza left and right. Two dopey. One, two, three, and two. Chorus. Reprise. Crescents. Double, two, three. Single, single, double, two, three, chorus. One, two, three, four, retrieve, riverenza. Other new leader crescent. Chorus, continenza, retrieve, riverenza. Okay, let's do that again that again and this time I'm not going to call. It's up to you to remember. We're going to start building that memoria from the top.
Questions before we move on to verse four. Excellent. So it's just a cute little kiss card. I do like I do like Dylan. It's a cute little game. Verse four. Same footwork. Two singles and a double. Two singles and a double. But we have casting figures here. So casting figures. But your own personal casting figure. So if we start facing this way, just in terms of pure geography, at the end of the first half of this figure. We'll be facing 180 degrees, and by the end of the figure, you'll be facing the way you were at the beginning. So you're going to be casting, meaning turning a half turn to face the other direction over your outside shoulder. If you're the follower, that's the right. If you're the leader, that's the left. So you actually do that with the two singles. All right, so we go single, single, and then we take the new inside hands, and we walk a little double in this direction. Double, two, three. And now we're going to cast again, but over our new outside shoulders, still with the two singles. Single, single, and then take hand, taking hands, double, two, three. Yes, and then into the chorus. So let's try that. Let's try that together slowly. Four, three, two, one. Single. Single, double, two, three, and single, single, double, two, three. At the end of which your left foot should be free. Okay, let's try that again. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and single, single, double, two, three, and single, single, double, two, three. Yes, exactly. It was just, it's funny. We're in tune. I was just about to say, it's like little hearts. This is a very similar, in certain ways, this is similar to figures that crop up in the 15th century in Green Ginger or in uh, Danse de Club, actually. The little heart, cute little heart sort of figure. Okay, let's try it again. Weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready, and single, single, double, two, three, and single, single, double, two, three. Let's do it again, but this time to the tempo of our actual the, the musician's tempo as I cannot alter it. So ready and da 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 So do it again, and this time we're going to tack on the chorus. So after you get back together with your partner, whether they're real or imagined, immediately continenza left. So weight is on our right foot, left foot is free. Ready and da 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 chorus da 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 reverenza one, two, three, four. Okay, let's go ahead and try that to the actual music without me humming or singing anything. Are there questions before I instruct the musicians to play? Okay, there being no questions. Here comes, let me just figure out where the music is and we'll I'll have it lead in a little bit. So go ahead and position yourself. Position yourselves, right foot is weighted, left foot is free. And single, single, double. Single, single, double, two, three, chorus. Reverenza. Okay. Time. Let's 
let this play through to the end of the chorus, and then we'll pick up from the cast and dance. Singles. Chorus. Questions about the casting figure. Okay, then I'm going to say we do the whole thing through to that point. So we have the first verse and chorus, which is our special child, our, our problem child, as it were. River ends at the beginning, not at the end. Then we have switching crescents, chorus two and three for verses two and three. And then we have casting for verse four. All of that being two singles and a double repeated for the same. Okay, let's go ahead and try it all the way through. Again, no intro, just commence with the Iverenza. Half chorus. Crescents. Two, three, one, two, three, and chorus. River New crescent. Chorus. Casting. Single, single. Double, two, three, chorus. Reverenza. Okay. Let's try that one more time, and then we're going to have a brief cultural interlude, and then we're going to learn the end of the dance where we get to finally put those spazzati into play. So this time, this is going to be a bit of a memory exercise, so I'm not going to call it. The advantage of having a recording, you can follow this up afterwards and drill this more, but for now, let's try to really work on that memory aspect of this dance. So this is definitely the fake it till you make it part of my class. Excellent. Okay. Questions about Villanella? Anything we've done thus far? Or even if you have a cultural note, are there any questions in general before we delve further into Caruso's strictures on how to not embarrass yourself? Okay, so he talks about clothing, <clears throat> specifically the capes. So he says, let me say then that there are others who, while dancing a grave dance or promenading with a lady, take one side of their cape in their left hand and put it over their left shoulder, leaving the other hand end hanging so far down that it trails along the ground, which is awkward and doesn't look well. For though ladies are permitted to trail their dresses or trains, if you will, this is not suitable for a gentleman. There are still others who wear their cloaks even more improperly while dancing, for they wrap themselves up as if swaddled, 
which has two unfortunate consequences. First, that they cover their sword hilts. Oh boy, I want to do that because, yeah, you might die. And the other, that the swords are so obstructed that if they should be needed, they could not be got at, thereby endangering their lives, which is a bad and perilous habit. So, I advise you to wear your cape or any mantle with which you cover yourself in the style I have shown you above, and always to shun this bad behavior since it displeases everyone and could cause the entire company to ridicule you. So I just love the idea that he's concerned about you possibly needing to protect yourself from death on the dance floor. Um, yeah, that's, that's an interesting little peek into the second half of the 16th century in Italy, that you should A, be wearing your sword when you're dancing, and B, it should be accessible and ready to go at any moment. And also that it looks unwell if you drag your cape on the floor, so don't do that. A um, little bit later, before we, uh, when we take one, our last little break, I'll read to you his stricture on what he says about capes and riding cloaks here and how you should wear it rather than how you shouldn't wear it. Okay, well that was a scary look into the 1580s. Are there any questions before we move on to the final section of our little cascarda, Villa Nostra? So my love, I require your body for this demonstration. This last figure, is actually a very common one in other dances uh, from this part of Europe and from this time. It is a sort of chain for two. In terms of geography, in terms of geography, we're facing each other to actually do this. We're going to take right hands. Don't worry about the footwork for now. We're going to take right hands and we'll just demonstrate. So we're going to pass, take right hands and pass. And as we pass, we're then going to turn over the shoulder that's not held on by a human. This is called counter turning, right? Because by taking hands, we create a certain kind of direction of rotation, right? And then we're going to counter turn the other way. So it's the turn, the direction in which you turned is always determined by the hand that is not occupied by a human. Okay, so let's, I know not, no one at the moment has a partner, but pretend you do. So take right hands with them and really imagine the pressure and feel of, of doing that. It's so realistic on my end. So we're going to pass just walking, normal walking steps. We're going to pass each other, passing right shoulders. And as we pass, once we pass, we'll turn over our left shoulder to face your ghost partner. Now take left hands, pass each other, and turn over the non-human hand. And we're facing each other. So this is our own little private chain. Let's try that. Let's try that a couple of times just to get that. It, it creates, it actually creates a sort of um, figure eight. Actually, if you were looking at it above, it would create a sort of figure eight. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. Right hands with our real and or imagined partner, just walking and passing and turning. Left hands passing and turning. Right hands passing and turning over left shoulder. Left hands passing and turning over right shoulder. So that's the geography. We only do that exchange once per hand, once on each side, and then we're back to place. So the actual footwork, and this is why it's important that your spazzati be ornamented in singles and not crazy galumping doubles, <laughs> is going to be two spazzati to pass. So you're taking, with, with your holding right hands, two spazzati to pass, two spazzati to turn over your shoulder, then with your left hands, two spazzati to pass and two spazzati to turn over your right shoulder. So let's go ahead and try that slowly. Weight is on our right foot, our left foot is free. And spezza toe and spezza toe and turn two, three and facing. Spezza toe and spezza toe and turn two, three and for now facing. Let's try that again. Right hands ready and Spezza toe and spezza toe and turning and spezza toe, spezza toe, turning. So the other, as I was doing this, it occurred to me to mention, the other reason to make your spezza too small is that you are supposed to do those full two, all two, the whole two of them, still holding hands. 
So if you did big spezzati, then you couldn't do that because you'd end up like already here past each other. So that is another indication of why your spezzati should be tiny and not country galumping steps. There's a lot of a lot of people in certain organizations, especially the SCA, who turn spezzati into these country bumpkin hoedown steps, and they're really not meant to be that. That's not a value judgment, it's just a fact. <laughs> okay, so weight is in our right foot, our left foot is free. Let's try this again. Ready, and spets a toe, and spets a toe, and turn to three, facing. Spets a toe, and spets a toe, and turn to three, and facing. So, do that again, and this time I want, we're gonna actually put the proper ending on it. We're gonna go into the chorus. So what that means is that instead of ending fully, ending facing at all, actually, you need to end facing forward so that you can do your chorus, which is the continenza, represa, represa, reverenza, right? So for the, uh, for the ladies, switch places, for the ladies, because we're doing the coming back thing, right? So for the, for the followers, for the ladies, that means that I actually have to turn a little bit extra to get all the way around. So for the followers, you have to turn a little extra over your right shoulder. For the leaders, you actually have to turn a little less, don't you? We just kind of slide into it. So you just kind of lazily slide into it? No. So for the leader, yeah. it's a little then when you go back, you don't turn all the way, you just kind of... Yeah, so for, 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 for the leaders, what I would recommend is maybe making your turn a little more bulbous on the first part of the turn, so that you actually, you actually end up taking more of a half turn than a full turn. So for instance... Um, Second fiddle. Yeah, so we're passing, he's still the leader. So when I turn extra, he's just going to scoop it a little more back so that he's still moving around but doesn't end up turning all the way because he shouldn't be turning all the way. We need to be facing forward again at the end of this figure so that we can then go into our chorus. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Spezzato, the, spe the spezzato chain into the chorus. And let's start it the way we would actually start it, which would be at the end of that casting figure or at the end of the last chorus, we'll be side by side. So that means, in essence, kind of in the zero time, you end up well, the. We ended the reverenza. Yeah, we ended the reverenza. Yeah. So when you come up, you're kind of already thinking about coming into the spazzato chain. Okay. So let's actually then practice that transition now. We're going to do the the final rever the reverenza of the previous chorus into the spazzato chain to get that transition. So weight is on our right foot. Our left foot is free. Ready and. Reverenza, spets a toe and spets a toe, turning, facing, spets a toe, spets a toe, turning some amount, and chorus, da 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 Okay, let's try that again from the, from the Reverenza at the chorus. The previous course, oh, oh, we're going, we're going full, okay, now we're going to see exactly how you need to control your sword. Remember, don't let your cape keep you from accessing the hilt. I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> here we're good. This is the first time I've ever danced with a man wearing, and that's a sharp sword, actually, so this will be exciting. It's got a sheath. It's got a sheath. Okay, weight is in our right foot. We're going to do the reverenza from the end of the previous chorus as part of the transition practice. So ready, and... Reverenza and spezzato, spezzato, turn to three, da da da. Spezzato, spezzato, turn to three, da da da. Chorus, da 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 da. Ripresa, ripresa, reverenza. Well, it didn't thwack me. That's great. <laughs> Okay, are there questions about the, that, and that is how the dance ends, that it ends on that final reverenza. And most cascade, they end with a reverenza built into the music. It's just part of the dance. Okay, then guess what? We are going to dance the whole dance through, and it's only danced once, I say only, 
It's only danced once, just five verses for God's sake. Um, okay, so brief recap, we have our first verse and chorus, which was our special guy with the reverends at the beginning instead of the end. Two doubles was the progression footwork. Then verses two, three, and four are all two singles and a double, two singles and a double in terms of footwork. Verses two and three were crescents, verse four was casting. And then verse five is the spazzato chain. Okay, let's do it. Doubles, half chorus, crescents, chorus of the black to furniture, riverenza, other crescent, double, singles, a double chorus. You crazy? Reverenza. Casting. Chorus. Passato chain. Okay, so we didn't actually practice the spazzati chain at full speed. I realized watching my husband wonder why his feet weren't keeping up. <laughs> his spazzati were so slow. Um, but other than the speed of the spazzati at the end, are there questions now that you've had a chance to dance it through once? Okay, we're going to do it, of course, again, but I want to give you the details on how you should actually be wearing your cloak, according to Messer Carrosso. So he says, <clears throat> let me say then that whether in balletti or in grave bastons, you wear your cape or riding cloak with its edges down and equal in length. Then with your left arm, lift half of its left side, putting it up over your left shoulder. Again, be careful not to cover the hilt of your sword. Well, he mentions this a lot. And clasp your cloak with your left arm so that it will not drop, placing its edge behind your sword hilt. For if you wear it with both sides down without raising it, you look like a pedant. <laughs> Um, a know-it-all. Furthermore, if the cape is made of sarsenet or light cloth, sarsenet is a, is a really nice silk, actually, it may easily fall off, which is inappropriate for a gentleman, especially when dancing the galliard or the pavanilia, the tordiglione, the cascarde, or other elevated and sprightly dances. Wear your cape or riding cloak then, as shown in the figures for the pavanilia and the tordiglione. So we actually Nice thing about this manual, it actually has pictures of the dancers in certain positions. So then you can actually see what that looks like. Um, and in fact, the cover of the book shows what he means. Okay, it'll come into focus, I promise. It's like some kind of longest fade in ever. Come on, stop it. Yeah, okay, so there you can see that is how this gentleman is wearing his cloak and you can see his sword at his side and you'll notice very intentionally that that cloak or the hilt is completely exposed and ready for action. So I don't know why it's so bizarrely bright and yet not here today. So that is how you should wear your cloak, gentlemen. Of course, it's funny, in the picture it doesn't look like the most evenly I've ever seen a cloak displayed, but there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and dance it through all the way from the top. And again, this is a bit of a memory exercise. I will do minimal calling. So, up to you to try to remember what comes next. Oh, you know what just occurred to me? Yeah, okay, so 
um, actually this this dance, this music does have an intro. It's an entire repetition of the music. So we'll actually go ahead and take that because that means I don't have to skitter and I can actually start the dance properly. The entire first time through the music, both verse and chorus, that's your intro. The longest intro ever. So no need to rush to start. Yeah, this would be you. This would be you escorting your partner to the dance floor. Exactly. Riverenza. Fontanenza. Two dopey. Apparently, that's just a really crazy long introduction at the beginning. Okay, one last time. One last time through the dance. So, yes, this would be the time when hypothetically. What? Where did it go? Oh. It's doing something weird. It's doing something very weird. Oh, I think it played on to the next turn. Yeah. Okay, so nice long introduction. This will be the time when you are escorting your partner to the floor and removing your gloves with your teeth. <laughs> Here we go, River Enza. to that weird track that's not a track. Okay, well, that has been uh, both your exploration of Villanella, your foray into 16th century Italian dance, and into 16th century dance full stop. Are there any questions? Okay, well then, I thank you all for joining me for uh, this exploration. I'm probably going to offer another series on 16th century dance with different dances from this one, but sort of the same idea where we explore different genres and different dances in different genres. So 
I'll be putting that out. Keep your eye out on the Creative Contessa Facebook page, but also my website is almost ready to roll out, and then that will be so much better than the Facebook page. Um, so keep your eye out for news on the Creative Contessa website going live. In the meanwhile, feel free to explore the other dance material and other medieval reenact Renaissance reenactment material that I've been publishing. I've just published something on medieval and Renaissance glassware yesterday. That's quite a lot of fun. Actually, lots of good information and self-deprecation. Um, so otherwise, thank you all for joining me, and I wish you happy dancing, and I hope to see you in another class at some point soon. Have a lovely Sunday afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is for you. <laughs>